Hello and welcome guys to Deception. In today's video, we are going to cover the chapter Natural Vegetation of ICSC Class 10 Geography. Now before beginning, let me tell you about the chapters that we have already covered. We have covered Climate of India, we have covered Soils in India and we have covered Water Resources. So do watch those videos, the link to those videos will be in the description box below. Now watch this video till the end and I hope you will understand the chapter Natural Vegetation easily. If you do and if you like the video, do hit the thumbs up button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to Eduception. Without further ado, let's begin. Natural Vegetation First of all, let me tell you what natural vegetation means. Now the plant community that grows naturally without the help of any humans is called natural vegetation. That basically means forests. So natural vegetation kya hota hai? Wo plant community jo khud ba khud naturally grow karta hai bina kisi human ke help ke usko hum bolte hai natural vegetation. Basically uska matlab hota hai forests. Thik hai? Natural vegetation mein hume India ke natural vegetation ke baare mein padhna hai. So we have to study about the natural vegetations that are found in India. Now in India, natural vegetations are found based on rainfall and relief. So there are five types of natural vegetations that are found in India. Other than this, we have to also study about the importance of forests in India and forest conservation. So first we will begin with the types of vegetations that are found in India. The first one is tropical evergreen forest. Then we have tropical deciduous forest also called tropical monsoon forest. Then we have tropical desert which is also called thorn and scrub forest. Then we have littoral forest which is also called mangrove forest. And then finally we have mountain forest. So these are the five types of vegetations that are found in India. Now we will have to study about them. So what we will do is we will study them one by one properly. Let's begin with tropical evergreen forest. Now tropical evergreen forest is the most dense forest which is present in India and it is found in the regions of very heavy rainfall. Now tropical evergreen forest is very very important for India. First of all it is the most dense forest which is found in India and there are many many species of both flora and fauna present in these forests. Now let's check out the characteristics one by one. First. Tropical evergreen forests are found in the areas of heavy rainfall with at least 200 cm annual rainfall and they are very dense. Like I told you, tropical evergreen forests are found in the regions of very heavy rainfall. The regions that receive at least 200 cm rainfall annually and these forests are very very dense. Not only big trees but also ferns, climbers, creepers etc are present that means there is a very thick undergrowth found in these forests. Then the climate of the region where they grow is hot and wet all throughout the year. Now for dense growth of trees hot and wet climate is required that is why the region where tropical evergreen forests are found the climate of the region is hot and wet all throughout the year. Next. As they are found in the regions of heavy rainfall, they are called rainforest. Now like I told you, tropical evergreen forests are found in the regions of very heavy rainfall. That is why these forests are also called rainforest. Now, jo tropical evergreen forest hota hai, wo bohat zyada barish ke regions mein paaya jata hai. Aur isi karan se tropical evergreen forest ko hum rainforest bhi bolte hai. Thik hai? Next. There is no leaf shedding season and the trees overlap each other to form a canopy. Now each and every tree sheds their leaves in some season or the other. But the trees present in tropical evergreen forests do not have a particular leaf shedding season. Okay, So they do not shed their leaves together and the trees overlap each other to form a canopy. I hope you know the meaning of canopy. The leaves of the trees they overlap each other like this so a canopy is formed at the top of the forest. Now at some places the canopy is so thick 
that sunlight cannot penetrate through and reach the ground. So you can understand how dense these forests are. Then the ground cover is thick and characterized by climbers, shrubs, creepers, etc. Like I told you, there is a thick undergrowth found in these forests, which is characterized by climbers, creepers, shrubs, ferns, etc. Then these forests cannot be exploited economically because of dense growth and lack of transport facilities, which is very, very good. Now these forests have very dense growth and there is no transport facility in these particular forests. So these forests cannot be exploited economically. And this is a very good thing because these forests are very important for India. Then what are the main trees that are found in these forests? There are two main trees that are found in these forests. Now there are millions of species which are found in these forests. But there are two most important trees that we will have to study and the trees are rosewood and sesame. Now both the trees are hardwood trees. That means the wood is very very hard and very very durable. Rosewood. Hardwood tree used to manufacture expensive furniture. Now rosewood is a very expensive tree. It is used for the manufacture of very expensive furniture. It is a hardwood tree and it is termite resistant. Then sesum. Sesum is also a hardwood tree. It is termite resistant and it is used to manufacture durable furniture. So the trees which are present in tropical evergreen forest have hardwood and those trees are very, very durable. And also those trees are very, very expensive. Now, what are the areas where tropical evergreen forest are found? First one is Western slope of Western Ghats. Now let's go back to the climate video. In the climate video, I told you that Western slope of Western Ghats receive a lot of rainfall. They receive a very high amount of rainfall. That is why tropical evergreen forests are found over there. Then we have Kerala. Then we have Garo, Khasi, Jayantia. Now let's go again back to the climate video. In that, I told you that the regions of Garo, Khasi and Jayantia receive a large amount of rainfall. Now, Moisin Ram, which receives the highest rainfall in the world, is situated over here. So, because of this high amount of rainfall, tropical evergreen forest is found in the regions of Garo, Khasi and Jayantia. Now guys, each and everything is very very important over here. So try to understand everything properly. Now we'll move on to the next type of vegetation. Moving on to tropical deciduous forest. Let's begin with the characteristics. First, these forests are also called monsoon forests and they are the most widespread variety of natural vegetation in India. Now, tropical deciduous forest is also called tropical monsoon forest and this forest is the most widespread variety of natural vegetation which is found in India. Then, these forests occur in the regions with average rainfall 100 to 200 centimeter and with temperature 25 to 30 degree Celsius. So over here the favorable rainfall and the favorable temperature is mentioned for the growth of these forests. Then the trees shed their leaves for six to eight weeks during the dry season that is during the month of March and April when sufficient moisture is not available. Now, we all know about the dry season of India. There is very, very less amount of rainfall. That is during the month of March and April, the rainfall is very, very less. So water is less available in the soil. Because of this, the trees shed their leaves for six to eight weeks. So it is rhyming. The trees shed their leaves for six to eight weeks. Why is that? Because sufficient moisture is not available and these trees have to retain moisture. That is why they shed leaves during the dry season. That means during the months of March and April. Then the trees grow fresh leaves during monsoon and there is a vigorous growth of the forests. Now after the dry season comes the monsoon season and during the monsoon season water is available in plenty because there is a lot of rainfall. Hence the trees grow fresh leaves and there is a vigorous growth of the forests. Now, all the leaves are shed. If new and fresh leaves are formed, 
that is why there is a vigorous growth of the forests during the monsoon season next very important economically as they provide valuable timber and other of forest products now unlike tropical evergreen forest these forests can be economically exploited because there is no thick undergrowth and transport facility is available so these forests are very important economically as they provide valuable timber for construction and other things and they also provide other forest products so these forests are very very important economically to india now what are the major trees that are found in tropical deciduous forest we have teak we have sal and we have sandalwood okay first of all teak now teak provides very durable wood for furniture manufacture now teak wood is very very durable and it is a hardwood it is a little expensive also and it is used for the manufacturing of furniture because it is a very good quality wood and it is very very durable then sal now sal is a hardwood tree which is used for the manufacture of railway sleepers now what are railway sleepers now you may have seen the patri that means the rail track of the railway it is something like this the two iron rails and in the between we have wooden slippers like this okay so sal wood is used for the manufacture of this railway slippers okay and it is also used for the manufacture of furniture because sal wood is also a very durable type of wood then we have sandalwood now we all know about sandalwood chandan ki lakdi ke bare mein to hum sabko pata hai chandan ki lakdi is very very useful and it is very very good chandan ki lakdi is used in perfumes and in handicrafts now sandalwood is very very important in india because in india a lot of sandalwood trees are present but they are being cut rigorously so it is very important to conserve the sandalwood trees which are found in india then what are the areas where tropical deciduous forest is found we have andaman and nicobar islands we have odisha we have madhya pradesh and we have assam now this forest is the most widespread variety of natural vegetation in india that means it is found in many of the regions but majorly it is found in andaman and nicobar islands odisha madhya pradesh and assam so guys that was all regarding tropical deciduous forest which is also called tropical monsoon forest everything is very important over here so try to understand everything properly now we will move on to the next type of vegetation moving on to tropical desert now this type of vegetation is found in the regions of very less rainfall and mostly the plants found over here are xerophytes let's check out the characteristics first number 1 Tropical desert is also called thorn and scrub forest and it is found in the regions which receive rainfall less than 50 cm. Like I told you, tropical deserts are found in the regions of very less rainfall and this type of vegetation is also called thorn and scrub forest. Then, the plants that grow in this type of vegetation are xerophytes. That means they either have thin leaves or no leaves. Now I told you this also majority of the plants that grow in the tropical deserts are xerophytes now what are xerophytes xerophytes are plants that adapt themselves to grow in regions of very less water that means they either have thin leaves or no leaves then the stems and leaves of the plants are often covered by spines now you may have seen a cactus plant the body of a cactus plant is covered by spines and why is it covered by spines to reduce transpiration by leaves so that it does not lose much water then the plants have very long roots to draw water from deep soil as the rainfall is very less now it is found in the region of very less rainfall that means water is very very less so the plants over here have very long roots so that they can draw water from deep soil Now over here you can be asked questions like how do plants adapt themselves in tropical desert where there is very less rainfall so you can write that the stems and leaves of the plants are often covered by spines so that there is less transpiration by leaves so that the water loss is less 
and you can write the plants have very long roots to draw water from deep soil as the rainfall is less okay now what are the trees which are found in tropical desert first we have babool now babool is very useful for medicinal purposes we all know that babool is very good for teeth and gums and the bark of babool is also very good for curing wounds then khair khair provides timber and it is used for tanning and dyeing that means it is used to color clothes and leather then date palms we all know about date palms khajur ke ped to date palms kya karte hain date palms khajur dete hain to they provide date fruit then what are the areas now if it is found in the regions of very less rainfall then you yourself can deduce the areas the areas are rajasthan and kutch kutch in gujarat so guys this was all regarding tropical desert it is also called thorn and scrub forest so over here everything is very important so try to understand everything properly now we'll move on to the next vegetation moving on to littoral forest now littoral forest is also called tidal forest or mangrove forest let's begin with the characteristics first these are tidal forests found along the coastal areas and river deltas now littoral forest is mostly found in coastal regions and river deltas you must have heard about sundarban delta sundarban delta is a river delta of the rivers ganga and brahmaputra and littoral forest is found over there next mangrove vegetation can survive both fresh and saline water now if littoral forest is found in the coastal areas that means it has to survive both fresh water as well as the salty sea water hence mangrove vegetation can survive both fresh and saline water next a hot and wet climate favors the growth of mangrove vegetation it is simple that mangrove vegetation grows best in hot and wet climate next the roots of this vegetation are breathing roots that emerge out of the mud now the roots of mangrove vegetation are breathing roots why because in the soil that it grows it has very less oxygen so to obtain oxygen it has to have breathing roots that emerge out of the mud then the roots are visible during the low tides but remain submerged during high tides now during high tides the level of water is high so the roots are submerged but during the low tides the level of water is low so the breathing roots are visible next these forests are very dense now if you have ever visited the sundarban delta the littoral forests found over there are very very dense now the stems and the roots are tangled so it becomes very very dense then what are the trees that are found in littoral forest we have sundari tree now sundari tree is very very important and sundarban delta is named after this tree now this tree is very important as the wood is hard and durable it is mostly used for boat making now in the region of sundarban and coastal areas boats are very very important okay because traveling in land is not possible they have to travel in water so boats are very useful over there that is why sundari tree is so important as it is used for boat making then what are the regions sundarban delta in west bengal like i told you then andaman islands and then the river deltas of river krishna godavari and mahanadi now guys everything is important over here so try to understand everything properly now we'll move on to the final type of vegetation which is mountain vegetation moving on to mountain forest now the name of this vegetation is mountain forest hence it is found mostly on mountains first these forests are found in the regions of low temperature less than 20 degrees celsius and high altitude more than 1000 meter so mountain forest is found in the regions of low temperature where the temperature is less than 20 degrees celsius and regions of high altitude where the altitude is more than 1000 meter hence they are found on mountains next in the temperate zone that means 1000 meter to 2000 meter altitude evergreen broadleaf trees are found now as we go up with altitude we have different zones 
between 1000 meter to 2000 meter altitude we have the temperate zone and over there evergreen broadleaf trees are found next coniferous forests are found in the regions of altitude above 2000 meter the trees have conical shapes to enable them to resist cold and snow now when we go above the altitude of 2000 meters we have coniferous forests and the trees have conical shapes to enable them to resist cold and snow let me show it to you now the trees over there are of this shape okay so why this shape now when snowfall happens the snow falls on the trees and what happens is because of this conical shape the snow gets off the tree so that it does not stay on the tree and the tree does not suffer because of cold okay so that is why conical shaped trees are found over there to resist the cold and snow if you have ever visited the higher regions of jammu kashmir and himachal pradesh you must have seen these types of trees next what type of trees are found over here first we have cheer pine now they are softwood trees used for packaging material now any softwood tree is used to make packaging material next we have deodhar deodhar is a hardwood tree and it is used for manufacture of furniture it is a very good quality tree next we have walnut walnut matlab akrot ka ped now it provides walnut matlab akrot to milta hi hai and it is used to manufacture walnut oil so walnut tree is very very important and it is mostly found in kashmir and himachal pradesh then what are the regions where mountain forests are found it is simple where there are mountains in india mountain forest will be found so we have kashmir himachal pradesh and in the south we have nilgiri hills okay guys that was all regarding mountain forest now over here everything is important so try to understand everything properly now we will move on to forest conservation before beginning with forest conservation we will talk about the forest cover in india and the importance of forest first we will talk about the forest cover in india now the current forest cover in india is 24.56% and it is the latest data given by the government on 30th of december 2019 now since the last few years the forest cover in india is steadily growing but we have a very long way to go now to maintain a very good ecological balance in our country we need at least 33% forest cover so we have a long way to go and i think we will achieve that next what is the importance of forest now there are many many points first forests are the lungs of earth they provide us with oxygen so we all know this that forests provide us with oxygen and they also help reduce global warming so they are the lungs of earth next forests are a storehouse of timber we all know that wood is obtained from forests then forests provide raw materials like paper rubber etc so forest is also a storehouse of many raw materials for example paper rubber and others then forests are very important to prevent soil erosion now i told you this in the soils video also that forests are very important to prevent soil erosion because forests hold the soil together and they do not let the soil to be loose and if the soil is not loose and if the soil is held together no erosion takes place then forests provide a natural habitat for many animals and birds now we all know that millions of species reside in forests whether it is flora or it is fauna now there are many other points of this you can find it in your books and on the internet so if you want to study that you can study that also now we will move on to the final thing of this video which is forest conservation moving on to forest conservation now there are many ways by which we can conserve the forests and help to increase the forest cover in india first a forestation this is the best way to plant trees guys whenever you get a chance please plant a tree because planting trees is very very important and it will help conserve forests and also increase the tree cover of india 
नेक्स्ट डेवलपमेंट ऑफ ग्रीन बेल्ट इन अर्बन एरियाज नाउ वॉट डू ग्रीन बेल्ट इन अर्बन एरियाज मीन नाउ इन अर्बन एरियाज वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ कॉन्क्रीट इफ वी मेक अ लिटिल क्लियरिंग एंड वी ग्रो ट्रीज ओवर देर देन इट इज कॉल्ड अ ग्रीन बेल्ट नाउ से फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज अ होल ब्लॉक ऑफ अ सिटी ओके दीज आर दी रोड्स नाउ से इफ वी मेक अ क्लियरिंग ओवर हियर एंड वी ग्रो अ लॉट ऑफ ट्रीज ओवर हियर देन दिस एरिया विल बी कॉल्ड अ ग्रीन बेल्ट इन अर्बन एरिया ओके सो इट विल हेल्प अ लॉट नेक्स्ट बैनिंग ऑफ डिफॉरेस्ट्रेशन फॉर एग्रीकल्चर नाउ एग्रीकल्चर इज वन ऑफ द मेजर रीजन ऑफ डिफॉरेस्ट्रेशन बिकॉज ऑफ द इंक्रीजिंग पॉपुलेशन द डिमांड ऑफ फूड इज इंक्रीजिंग एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट डिफॉरेस्ट्रेशन इज कॉज so that land can be used for agriculture so this should be banned because it may seem that we need more food but it will harm us afterwards so it is better to ban deforestation for agriculture next programs like van mahotsav should be encouraged now i hope you guys know what van mahotsav is van mahotsav is the forest festival of india now every year since 1950 during the month of july and august many many plants are planted in india now in the beginning it was only for government organizations but afterwards many people have joined this initiative and during the month of july or august many thousands of trees are planted in india during the program of van mahotsav it is amazing next fire lines should be created to prevent forest fire now we all know about forest fire to prevent forest fire fire lines should be created and if forest fires are prevented a huge amount of forest cover can be saved next government plans should be developed and promoted for forest conservation now the government has to come up and has to create many many plans and programs so that forest conservation can take place not only the government we also the citizens of india should take part in it and we should plant trees wherever possible okay so this is very very important for us too as citizens now guys with the end of everything this whole chapter is covered if you have any doubts or any problems you can let me know in the comment section below i will definitely answer that new videos on adception will be coming very soon so stay tuned until then this is rishi on behalf of adception signing off and guys Take care